Hello, Walkmat. This is Ken Paoli, coming to you from the Chicago area in the United States. Uh, thanks for having me back, and I'm going to uh, deliver a paper on MIDI 2.0, and I hope you will enjoy it and that you will find some uh, good information with this new protocol that has been uh, released earlier this year. Uh, be right back, and we'll begin. MIDI 2.0, looking back and moving forward. In 1983, at the Winter NAM show, the musical instrument digital interface, MIDI 1.0, made its official debut when a sequential circuit's Prophet 600 synthesizer communicated with a Jupiter 6 using a 5-pin DIN cable. It was a demonstration that showed the possibility of layering synthesizer sounds triggered from a single keyboard. There were no MIDI sequencers for multi-track recording, no MIDI drum machines, and the computers of the day were the Apple II and the Commodore 64. Until February 2020, the MIDI specification remained at 1.0. The specification, which is in the public domain, is implemented voluntarily and is owned by no one, but it is overseen by the MIDI Manufacturers Association and the Association of Musical Electronics Industry. Version 1.0 is a bit misleading, however, as there have been many additions to the MIDI specification. Additions uh, to the language include the following. The standard MIDI file, .mid, MIDI timecode, which was designed by the engineers at AVID to allow MIDI sync and SMPTE to communicate. MIDI machine control, which allowed for the control of transports between MIDI devices. MIDI show control, which allowed for pneumatics, pyrotechnics, and hydraulics to be controlled by MIDI, and General MIDI 1 and General MIDI 2. I uh, should go back for a moment and say the ability of the entire industry to settle on a single standard back in 1983 was indeed quite remarkable, given how competitive the instrument manufacturers were. Since the late 1900s and early 2000s, there has been constant talk about the upgrading to MIDI version 2.0. In 1998, a brainstorming group met to outline MIDI 2.0, and amongst the suggestions were the following. More controllers, especially non-keyboard controllers. 3D spatialization control instead of simple panning. Looping information embedded in MIDI files. Peer-to-peer -peer discovery rather than blind data transmission, and sample accuracy synchronization. What's wrong with MIDI 1.0? Well, after 37 years, it's not unreasonable to believe that MIDI is long overdue for an upgrade. Some problems have persisted since the inception of the specification. A common complaint relates to the timing issues in MIDI 1.0 that create jitter, usually referred to as time slop. Another issue is latency, which is the time between the initiation of a MIDI message and its execution. Latency can be heightened by the number of devices found in an audio and MIDI chain in a modern studio, and timing issues in MIDI 1.0 can create data bottlenecks. Audio latency, which is measured in milliseconds, has been improved, especially in the Windows OS environment. But the intrusive nature of Windows OS, pre-Windows 7, by the way, in handshaking, caused manufacturers like eMagic and Steinberg to create their own EC and audio drivers. EC and ACO audio drivers. 
USB connections which have been added to the typical 5-pin DIN connectors were thought to help MIDI timing deficiency, however this was not the case. Another issue with MIDI 1.0 is the 7-bit limit for data, which limits parameters to 128 steps of resolution. This limit in resolution hampers the nuance capability of MIDI instruments. The notable exception in MIDI 1.0 is pitch bend, which uses two 7-bit bytes to produce higher resolution values for that parameter. Most MIDI channel messages are two or three bytes of 8-bit data, with the system exclusive message area reserved for data that requires an open-ended file size. While the MMA and the AMEI have been responsive to market demands and added significant changes and improvements to the MIDI specification, they are often not timely. The industry will move forward when changes do not happen quickly enough or fall short of the manufacturer's design goals. An example would be Roland's GS and Yamaha's XG General MIDI expansions which sprang from the disappointment that these manufacturers felt concerning the perceived shortcomings with General MIDI 1 specifications. The expansion of the General MIDI specification by these two manufacturers led to the adoption of the General MIDI 2 specification, which incorporated many of the additional features of the Roland and Yamaha expansions. Some of the elements implemented in MIDI 2.0 are answers to issues that some manufacturers and programmers have already addressed. For instance, open sound control already allows for bi-directional communication and has addressed many of the timing issues in MIDI 1.0. MIDI polyphonic expression, or MPE, has been implemented under MIDI 1.0 and several software companies are adding the recording and editing of this data in their digital audio workstations. Many hardware devices offer the ability to integrate with DAWs right out of the box with little or no configuration necessary. While perhaps not timely, the incorporation of these independent advancements into MIDI 2.0 brings industry standardization that provides clarity in the marketplace for manufacturers, developers, and musicians. Moving forward with MIDI 2.0. Because of the longevity and pervasiveness of MIDI 1.0, backward compatibility was deemed to be essential. It is also assumed that MIDI 1.0 and MIDI 2.0 devices would have to coexist, at least in the short term. The reality is that many MIDI 1.0 devices will never become MIDI 2.0 compliant. Their design reflects the capabilities of the time, which should not now be viewed as a shortcoming, but rather as a legacy device that is still maintained under the new specification. The ability to check uh, for MIDI 2.0 compatibility is accomplished through MIDI Capability Inquiry, called MIDI CI. This is a bi-directional connection that allows MIDI devices to communicate and exchange their capabilities. When two devices are connected, they use MIDI 1.0 to confirm capabilities before using expanded features. If a device does not support MIDI 2.0, it will use MIDI 1.0 with that device. If the devices share support for features under MIDI 2.0, those features become available for implementation. MIDI CI uses the universal system exclusive message to implement profiles between devices and is divided into three categories, protocol negotiation, profile configuration, and property exchange. An inquiry failure in any of these three areas will fall back to MIDI 1.0 for that particular feature. The implication is that features of MIDI 2.0 may be implemented incrementally with MIDI 1.0 
as a universal backstop. And here we see the diagram from the MIDI Manufacturers Association, and we see MIDI CI in the center of this, connecting a synthesizer and a computer. And we see down here is the initial protocol negotiation, which we'll talk about in a little more detail. And you see the MIDI 1 protocol and the MIDI 2 protocol. If we look above MIDI CI, we see if there is a failure in either protocol, property exchange, or profile, then the machine will use and be recognized as a MIDI 1 device and be used as such under the MIDI 2.0 specification. Protocol negotiations. Protocol negotiation is the process of two MIDI devices deciding which protocol to use, MIDI 1 or MIDI 2. This portion of the process is accomplished using system exclusive messages from the MIDI 1 protocol. If successful, MIDI 2 will be activated for the devices. This requires a bi-directional connection, and while MIDI 2.0 has no specific transport requirement, the recently completed USB specification for MIDI 2 allows that uh, connection type. Other connections uh, will probably be uh, rolled out in the future, but they will require individual specifications to be developed and approved. This might slow the progress of deploying MIDI 2.0 in actual products. Once the machines are communicating in MIDI 2.0, the MIDI 2 protocol messages are used. In this way, MIDI 2 protocol is an extension of MIDI 1. It maintains a similar architecture. However, the data resolution for all channel volume messages, CVMs, has been increased to 32 bits. Besides the obvious increase in resolution, the new CVMs have per note control to uh, increase the expressive capability of MIDI devices. The communication is accomplished using the new universal MIDI packet. This packet format can accommodate message lengths from 32 to 128 bits and supports 256 channels of MIDI, 16 by 16. UMP can carry either MIDI 1 or MIDI 2 protocol streams. It can transmit and receive channel messages, system real-time and common messages, system exclusive data, jitter reduction time stamping. And at the time of the specification release, it should be noted that high-speed transmission will not be possible on the original and standard 5-pin DIN plugs. Uh, but will require either USB or Ethernet. Uh, as an example, here is a note on event. The note on event requires 64 bits of information compared to the 24 bits in MIDI 1. This allows for 16 bits to be dedicated to velocity, which I'm showing you here, and another 16 bits can be dedicated to an attribute. The attribute type is defined after the note number, which stays in the usual MIDI range of 128. However, velocity now gives you over 65,000 values. Control change messages now allow for over 32,000 controllers organized in 128 banks of 128. RPNs and NRPNs have been replaced with 16,384 registered controllers and an equal number of assignable controllers that are implemented in the same manner as a typical control change message. Per note uh, controllers will be as expressive as MPE with the additional benefit of now being implemented in high resolution on a single channel. The additional attribute portion of a MIDI message 
will allow for the individual tuning of each note for microtonal composers down to 1 512th of a semitone. And this means that you will actually carry tuning information with each individual pitch. And here we have an example of per note pitch bend. And here we have an example of a MIDI 1.0 channel voice message converted into the universal MIDI packet. So you can see here, this would be a three byte message. Uh, this would be something like uh, note on, which would carry the channel, the note, and the velocity. And you can see here how it has been reformatted into the universal MIDI packet. Here is a program change message. And this is reinterpreted in MIDI 2.0. Here you have on the bottom the MIDI program change, which again has only uh, two bits uh, of inf uh, two bytes rather of information. Uh, it has the channel and the program change number. Of course, with the addition of Bank Select, you have two other pieces of information: the Bank Select MSB and the Bank Select LSB. So. If, in this program change for MIDI 2.0, if this bank is 1, then bytes 7 and 8 are copied to bytes 3 of the bank select messages. And, of course, byte 5 is actually the program change. So here is a typical MIDI 1 message. Here is the same message in MIDI 2.0. Profile configuration. Profile configuration provides profiles that can configure a device for specific uses. For example, a control surface initiates a profile inquiry with a device that has a mixer profile. After receiving a reply to profile inquiry, the profile is set to on and the controls will map to faders, panning controls, and other typical mixer parameters. The term typical is important in that across time, certain parameters of MIDI instruments have become typical and they establish the groundwork to develop uh, profiles. The same control surface could be remapped to control a device with a drawbar organ profile to map its controls dynamically to virtual drawbars and other typical organ parameters, such as percussion and vibrato and Leslie. This feature is akin to an automated version of MIDI Learn and should reduce manual programming and reduce the uh, time required to set up devices. According to the specification, profiles are controlled by the following common profile configuration messages. The profile inquiry, the reply to the profile inquiry, the setting profile to on, the setting profile to off, and the profile enabled report, and profile disabled report. The profile specification defines the receiver device implementation of specific MIDI messages that include this rather long list, but a number of things that you recognize, note on, note off, tuning messages, uh, controller messages, uh, bank select program change, system messages, uh, registered parameter, uh, uh, any profile specific system exclusive message, the minimum polyphony, the number of MIDI channels, how many MIDI ports are supported, etc. <laughs> Profile 
Property exchange. Property exchange is a dialogue between two MIDI devices using inquiry messages and matching reply messages. One device is the MIDI CI initiator and the other is the MIDI CI responder. In order for devices to use property exchange, the initiator device enacts a discovery transaction with the responding device. The two devices use an inquiry property exchange capability message to discover basic property exchange support capabilities of the two devices. The initiator device sends an inquiry get property data message with a resource list request to discover the particular property exchange features the responder device supports. The main functions of property exchange result in two actions, the getting and setting of properties and or values of properties of the connected device using an inquiry get property data uh, message and inquiry set property data message. Again, these inquiries are messages issued by the initiator device. The reply messages are returned by the responder device. Subscriptions. The initiator device may subscribe to a resource from a responding device if the responder has replied that the resource is indeed available as a subscription. If the resource is changed on the responder device, the responder informs the initiator by way of, of a subscription message. The subscription mechanism can also be used to keep a resource synchronized between the initiator and the responding devices. Resources. Resources are defined by either the MMA or the AMEI or the manufacturer to describe the properties that can be implemented and updated through property exchange resource definitions that include the intent, intelligence required to use them, and how they relate with other resources. The level of MIDI implementation has always been up to the device manufacturer's discretion and marketing needs. Manufacturers may decide which resources to implement, but a response to resource list is now a mandatory requirement for all devices that support property exchange. Once devices get, set, or subscribe to a resource, the data available becomes the property data for the resource. The resource defines the content of the property data. Property exchange will allow for the automatic device configuration, controller lists, program names, metadata and manufacturer information, including model and version number. It can also provide visual editors to a DAW with no additional software. And once this information is available to the DAW, it may be stored and recalled in the session file. Property exchange is sent, again, using the new universal system exclusive message. The file header is uh, JSON compliant, and the property data portion of the file may be JSON or any other data format that will be dependent on the defined requirements of the resource. Property Exchange also contains error and notify messages to assist in troubleshooting any connection errors. Both the MMA and the AMEI have adopted a use MIDI message first approach. Settings that may be controlled using typical MIDI messages should do so and reserve property exchange for messages and properties that exceed the well-established messages of the MIDI language. Summary. While MIDI 1.0 was expanded in various ways to accommodate the evolutionary implementation of MIDI, the promises of an upgrade specification were rumored for years. The industry moved forward, and in many ways, MIDI 2.0 is catching up to technology that is already uh, available in the marketplace. Uh, some examples follow. Uh, MPE has been uh, implemented in MIDI 1.0,
and, but it uses multiple MIDI channels to achieve its end. Uh, some people refer to this as a MIDI hack, but both Roly keyboards and Linstruments are MPE products that are already in the marketplace. These instruments expand the usual MIDI messages like velocity and aftertouch by allowing the performer a greater number of performance gestures, polyphonically if desired. The success of these devices has caused DAW manufacturers to include the ability to record this additional multi-channel performance data. And here's a short example uh, of a Roly. Uh, Steinberg has developed Note Expression, which allows controller data to be included with a note event. This takes the notion of a channel message, which affects all of the notes on a channel, and makes it an individual event. This requires a VST3 level device, but Steinberg has already released software instruments able to take advantage of this feature. OSC has implemented bidirectional communications, and this attribute is being included in hardware controllers. Uh, uh, Ableton Live, being a performance-based DAW, has always been a controller-friendly application, and many controllers are designed to automatically interface with Ableton Live. Manufacturers have designed hardware to seamlessly integrate with their software. Uh, the Native Instruments NKS system offers automatic keyboard mapping to their software and other compatible devices. And here's a brief promo. Speculation. The advantage of MIDI 1.0 was the level of standardization it brought to the marketplace so that all gear would have a lever, level of interoperability. The same will be true for MIDI 2.0. Per note expression will bring the expressive capability of MPE to more devices and it will put this information on one channel, making it much more manageable. Controllers will benefit from the increased resolution to more closely resemble the smooth feeling of an analog control. 
and this will replace attempts to create greater resolution using MIDI 1.0. The addition of attribute data in the note on message will allow for higher levels of expression and nuance, causing electronic instruments to more closely resemble analog instruments. MIDI 2.0 will bring several existing technologies that were not available in MIDI 1.0 into compliance under a standard. This will take time to impact the marketplace as different products begin to be developed. Existing software, especially DAWs, will need to include designs to accommodate the additional data requirements and the additional information that MIDI CI will provide. Controllers will need to be designed with editing in mind and software instruments may need to be altered to take advantage of per note expression. With its fallback strategy concerning MIDI 1.0, MIDI 2 should allow a studio to have legacy and current MIDI devices smoothly running together. Perhaps the most exciting thing about MIDI 2.0 is the unknown. What technology applications and devices will appear as the new capacities of the MIDI 2.0 specification are explored by developers, performers, improvisers, programmers, and inventors. Only time will tell. And that brings us to the end of our paper. And I hope you uh, found some information uh, that was useful. Hope, so, hope it wasn't too dry when we talk about uh, protocols. Um, but again, Thank you for your attention and thank you for the opportunity. What technology applications and devices will appear as the new capacities of the MIDI 2.0 specification are explored by developers, performers, improvisers, programmers, and inventors? Only time will tell. And that brings us to the end of our paper. And I hope you uh, found some information uh, that was useful. Hope, so. hope it wasn't too dry when we talk about uh, protocols. Um, but again, thank you for your attention and thank you for the opportunity.